What's going on guys? Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today, we got a fun, action-packed filled day for you guys. We're actually, I don't know if you can tell, this is definitely not in the bus. So we're at my parents' house. The bus is still at the shop. I still think we have a few days left before we're gonna be able to get back to the bus. But it's been okay. You know, we're, we're, we're hanging in there. Life is doing its thing and we're gonna be fine. But anyway, today we've got an action-packed day. We're doing a couple new things. We're kind of gonna show you around our city a little bit or kind of where we grew up and uh, kind of do a few things and maybe eat something very, very culturally centered around the Tampa area. So, hope you guys are strapped in and ready to go. I think it's gonna be a good day. The adventure begins right now. If there is something we need, it's a leap of faith. A step away from the comfort zone and be a little brave. So take a look around you. How far can you see? How far do you think you can run? Standing on your own knees It's a beautiful world out there Just don't pass on the dare If you have the will and a moment to spare It's a beautiful world out there Alright guys, so our first stop in our adventures today is taking us to Tampa, Florida. It's a place called Armature Works. They uh, converted several years back an old warehouse in that district into kind of like a... Um, I don't know, what's the word? Multi-purpose center. They have a lot of restaurants. Kind of have like a food court. I know they're popping up all over major cities all over the all over the country now. They're having an exotic car show today. I don't know if you can tell to the left. You can see downtown Tampa there. It is a little hazy today, so it's actually even a little hard for us to see. But this is a famous intersection on the one of on the most dangerous road in the United States. I-4 malfunction junction. So it's in Tampa where it interchanges from I-4 ends into Interstate 275, which is a uh, leg off of I-75 that basically cuts you through Tampa and into St. Petersburg. But it is an absolutely engineering fail. It always has been. Even since I was a kid, I remember this road has sucked. And add a couple million more people and it still sucks. We brought the kids along with us today. Hi, say hi kids. Um, the boys are pretty stoked to see some uh, exotic cars. Molly, no, I don't think she really cares either way. We'll check it out and uh, see what it's all about. We've made it to Armature Works. Just a hop, skip, and a jump. It is packed down here. There is so many exotic cars, so many people. First off, we're gonna take you back here because it looks like that's where the bulk of the cars are. The adventure continues. This is definitely more my speed right here. This old Dodge 200 pickup, that is a rare piece. Look at the four door. That has to be custom built. Look at it, it's got a 6.7, I think it's a 6.7 or 6.9 turbo Cummins. This thing is cool as crap. So I'm going to give you the gen version because I have no clue what the majority of these cars are. If you know what this is, comment down below. I'm just here for the ride. This one looks so cute. I like fun and unique cars and, and funky cars. I'm, I'm not all about the the fancy ones, which I don't even know what this one is. That's not, that's not really my speed. I like older and unique and quirky. Oh, look at the little old Honda CRX. These things are so cute. Oh, here's the old Supers. I almost bought one of these a few years ago. I always wanted one. But that's actually right-hand drive. Right-hand drive, left-hand drive, right-hand drive. See, now this one is definitely more my speed. Way better than those uh, fancy schmancy cars. These are when cars have style, you know? Like, cars have personality. Like, look at this grill. It's a 46 Chevrolet, and I only know that because it says it on top. I mean, these, these are fine. But this, this is pretty cool. It's a Bentley? That is a cute, God, look at that car. That is, you know, that is class and beauty. Wow, see that, this is probably my favorite one here. <laughs> this is a, this is a huge 
car show with a bunch of exotic cars. They've got they've got some vendors. They've got more cars over here. But I gotta tell you though, my favorites are the older cars. They're unique. They have style, personality, and then the owners have style and personality too. Nothing against if you own a high-end exotic car. My jam is with those older cars that have some style, that have some spunk. That's where I'm at. Let's go check out some more. There's a Lambo, or there's a Ford GT over here. These things are, you'll see a lot of these on the road. Oh, see, now this is more, I like these, look at this, it's just classy. It's clean, it's classy. It's not like, ooh, up in your face. It's more my speed. This is a cute little color. See, that's, that's what you get when Jen takes you around at the car shows, is you get comments on how cute the color is and how adorable the car looks. You get no specs or details or horsepower or anything like that, but it looks cute. Look at this Camaro. Isn't that one pretty? Forget all those other fancy schmancy sports cars. Look at this beauty. Look at that engine. I'm gonna pretend like I know what I'm talking about right now, but I don't, but that is gorgeous. But let's look at the interior. Wow. See, cars had so much style and personality and they were just, they were freaking cool. Right next to it though, we've got uh, another awesome one. What, what, what do you think? Do you like the newer fancy sports cars? Look at those seats. Do you like those newer fancy sports cars or do you, you like the older ones with spunk and class and you know and they got good booties too they got cute booties i love it i love it all right guys so i hope you enjoyed the car show um there was some cool cars there's not as not as big as i thought it would be um kind of expected quite a bit more but we're in downtown tampa now you see that funny little cylinder shaped building up there i believe that is owned by the a big tech company here in Tampa Bay area. You got the public library here on the right. But we're headed to get a Cuban sandwich. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of a Cuban sandwich, but it's a huge dish here or huge item here in Florida, especially the Tampa Bay area and then South Florida, the Miami area. I've actually never been to this place we're going today, but it's very, very highly rated. I've heard a lot of good things about it but it's, a, it's an exceptional sandwich, and we'll talk a little bit more about it once we get there. But Tampa, back in the you know early 20th century, had a huge cigar production uh, industry here. Like it was one of the, I believe at the time, one of the biggest in the world. They got a lot of uh, Cuban immigrants coming to this area and in a section of the town called Ybor City, they produced uh, tons of cigars. If you want to look it up and find some history on it, it's pretty interesting how they did it. The Cuban sandwich kind of derived from that, um, starting out as basically like a ham and cheese sandwich and is kind of morphed into what it is today. And we'll, uh, we'll show you guys, it's pretty good. It's, it's a really, it's kind of simple, uh, but it's a, it's a specific type of bread that is baked specifically for this type of sandwich. Um, it's very high in glucose and gluten. The de probably one of the most unhealthy breads you're ever going to consume, but it is pretty amazing. But like I said, Tampa's you know pretty bustling nowadays. Definitely compared to when I was a kid, there really was really no reason to come down here back then. It was just people drove in to go to work and then they went home and that was pretty much it there was really not a lot to do but the Tampa Bay area is definitely huge and it's definitely grown a lot over the years uh, we've got some really good sports teams with the Rays the Lightning and the Bucks which have all had if you follow sports at all a ton of success in the past few years we're gonna roll through here and we're gonna be heading to a little community called Riverview which is a suburb of the Tampa Bay area which is another up-and-coming huge area in the uh, Tampa Bay area and actually Jen grew up and spent most of her life in the Riverview area So that'd be fun to kind of check out some of her old stomping grounds So let's get through downtown and we will pick you guys up once we get to Box of Cubans Sometimes what you want ain't what you need Sometimes letting go can make your heart bleed Sometimes the road ahead seems dark as night yeah. 
Have some faith in yourself That's the garden light You should know that When your dreams have Hit the ceiling and fallen back down on the ground Let me tell you I know the feeling Alright, here we are The box of Cubans. I know, I know Kyle's very excited. This, this looks freaking good. Yeah, this is, this is that, so this is Cuban bread. This is the Cuban bread. I don't know, I don't really know how to describe it. I don't even know what it would be considered being like. But here we go, we got roast pork, which in my opinion, this is what makes the sandwich really pop. It's fresh roasted pork. It's not like a deli meat. Of course, you have your ham, mustard, Swiss cheese, and a pickle. It's a really simple sandwich, but the way they with the with the bread they do with it, it's pretty amazing. Well, it's definitely worth all the wait. What are your thoughts? That might be my favorite one I've ever had. Favorite Cuban ever, and you were from the Tampa Bay area. Yeah. I've had a lot of them. That might be the best one yet. Mm. Alright, Ben, did you take a bite? What do you think? It's really good. Oh you like it? Yeah. It's good. Yeah. Good? Dessert is a banana, Nutella, and banana. Mm. Mm. That's good. It's not a puppy piece, but it's, it's an empanada, but it's stuffed with banana and Nutella. It's rich. Mm. It's, got the, it's, got, it's got like a fried dough type flavor. But it's real banana. Yeah, that's pretty freaking good. Mama, look. What mm. is word? Is it good, Eli? Yeah. Our adventures have brought us to the side of US Highway 41 for something very interesting. Check it out. This boot that you see up top is actually a replica. Al Tamani and his wife, Jeannie, he was the giant. So he was a giant. He was eight foot five and a half inches tall. And his wife, Jeannie, was actually a half lady. She was born with no legs. And so they moved here once they retired from the circus and they started what was known as Giants Camp. And Giants Camp was actually located in here. It was a restaurant. I ate there many times when I was a child. They started this restaurant for, you know, other circus performers, fishermen. There's a there's a dock right over there. So it's, it's a really neat tribute to them because they really did a lot for the Gibsonton community and the, the circus performers and the circus community in the sideshows. They had his actual boot out here for many years, but a car crashed into the restaurant, which the boot was out in front of the restaurant, so it got destroyed. So that is that is Gibsonton's claim to fame. It is the sideshow, which brings us to where we're going next. So let's let's leave leave this boot and the adventure continues. Edwin Garcia was last seen on April the 20th, 2022, missing from Galveston, Texas. Born on, to on October the 9th, 2005, 17 years of age, Hispanic male, bra black hair, brown eyes, 5 foot 4, and approximately 130 pounds. Again, Edwin was last seen on April the 20th of 2022. If you have any information to the whereabouts of Edwin, please reach out to the Galveston Police Department at 409-765-765. 3702. Let's see if we can try to help bring Edwin home.